Hey Power Rappers and my Power BI friends, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video we're going to focus on how do we build a Power BI report against the Dataverse. So stay tuned. Where there's data, there's always a need for dashboards and reports. And the same thing holds true for Dataverse. So in this uh, uh, video, we're going to focus on how we build a report against all that Dataverse database, uh, Dataverse data that you originated with your Canvas or your Power App uh, or your Dynamics environment or whatever you might have. So the report we're going to build will look like this when it's all done. Really, really simple report. We're not going to focus actually on the report itself a whole lot because honestly, there's a whole bunch more videos we have on, on Power Apps. So our first step is going to be, let's open up uh, our, Power, our Power, Power BI environment, and I'll skip the intro uh, screen, the splash screen that opens up, and I'll skip all of that. And when I do that, I'll go click on the Dataverse button right here. You can also access it under Get Data, and you can see Dataverse right here as well. Either way, it takes you to the same spot. The first question it's going to ask you is what environment domain do you have? Now to get that, I'm going to open up my Dataverse environment, okay, and you'll notice uh, a few things here. Let me go over to make.powerapps.com here. All right, and at make.powerapps.com, uh, there's a few things I want to show you before we actually get into the environment piece. So I'm going to go to my solutions, and the, the data we're pulling from is the Tenure Tracker solution. When I go to the settings of the solution in my solutions area, you'll notice that I've got this publisher that's called Kent. And that publisher is going to have a prefix of Kent on it also. Meaning that every table that I want to use is going to have Kent underscore in front of it. See these tables right here? So there's some tables and other objects here, but my tables will always have Kent underscore in front of it. Meaning that it helps me kind of organize my tables and prevent collisions from other solutions that are similar to that. So, now I have went ahead and opened up the app that you're seeing uh, right here, my model driven app. And when I play this app, the first thing it's going to show me is my environment URL up top. That's one way you can get to that environment. The other way we can get there is by going to our, let me close this, oh, okay, there we go, close that. And let me go to the admin center also. Inside the admin center, I'll go and I'll find my mock-up environment. Just has all my all my goodies that we've been playing with in the last uh, hundred or so videos, and inside that mockup environment, so I went to uh, and this, you'll notice the URL here admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. Then you go to the actual environment that you wish. So pick pick your environment. Okay. So if I go over to here, there we go. Then you'll see the URL right here. Now, traditionally, URLs look a little bit more funky than that, right? So if I go to like this, this, uh, this environment right here, you'll notice my environment name has a goofy name that looks like this. Now, you can always change that by hitting edit and then typing in the new URL right here. But let me find my URL for this example by going back there again, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that from my mock-up environment. There it is. Let me go ahead and copy that. And I'm not going to use that inside of Power BI. Here we go. So I'll paste that in. Make sure you strip out any forward slashes, any HTTPSs, and just leave the core domain name and you and a C name there. Now, next, your question you'll need is: Do you want to do connectivity mode of import or direct query? So direct query here is going to be live. So our data is live, and the pro of that is, of course, we have live data. The con of that is it's going to be slower for your queries, and it's also going to limit some of the Power BI features you can do. For import, the, the pro is you get full functionality, you'll get speed, the con is it's stale data. So it all, the data is only as good as when you refresh last. Let's go ahead and do direct queries. So we can kind of play a little bit live here, and I'll hit OK. OK. That is a U of value. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do that. Huh. 
Let me cancel. I'm going to come back again here. I wonder if it's just getting a little funky right now. Direct query and OK. All right, go figure. I, probably because I left the screen and came back. Anyways, our next step is I want to go ahead and bring over our Kent tables. You'll notice that I'm going to check in the achievement table and then I'll also pick this uh, achievement, the uh, tenure achievement table also. And then I'll hit uh, transform. Now, once I do this, you'll notice it's going to bring over a lot more columns than I ever would need in my Power Apps environment. So first thing I want to do is I'll go ahead and, and rename my, my query over here. And again, we're not going to go through all the steps of Power, Power BI here since there's tons of other videos we have on our channel uh, around this. But if I double click on it, I'll just call this uh, Tenure Achievement Log, something like that. And then I can go through and rename our, our kill, the columns I don't really need. So I'm going to start with a created by, and I'm going to hold down my shift key and hit right a whole bunch of times until I get to the Kent underscore columns. So right around there are my Kent underscore columns. Now, a few gotchas you're going to see here. First of all, you'll, you'll see there's a relationship between this achievement log table and the achievement table. Later, we'll see there's actually a relationship line. But what it's done here is it's actually brought over this, this the ID, the primary key for that column. And if I slide to the right, we'll see uh, right, right around, oh, where'd it go? Right here. Book authored, speaking engagement, so on and so on. This is from that other table. See these two nulls right here? Those two nulls will match the two nulls that you're seeing right there. So anywhere you see a value on the right, you'll see the name for that value right here. So there's a primary key and then your name column for that primary key. Same thing for the professor right here. I had the professor ID and the professor's name. So this is coming from the user table, I believe, inside of Power Apps in this case. And if you don't want it, just select it, hit delete, and you'll still get the goodness over here as well. Now to the right of the Kent underscore columns, there's a whole bunch of other table relationships and, and crap that you probably don't need. So in those cases, you're going to want to delete that as well. Additionally, you can double click on any column and just go ahead and type in what you want there and rename it. Every step along the way is keeping track of what I've done so I can always undo those steps if I wanted to as well. The other thing to note that's different around Power Apps is option columns. Option set columns or choices columns, choice columns, allow us to create a pick list or a drop down box. If it was truly a drop down box or a choice column, this is going to allow you to automatically turn that choice into its name and its number. A choices column is for multi-selects, where you can have multiple items that a user can select. Inside of Power BI, it's going to automatically turn that number for the choice into its name. In other words, if I go over here to the left, we'll see achievement status and right next to it, achievement name. So as I kind of zoom in one more time here, this is the number for the word pending. So see it has ends with four zeros. Down here ends with four, uh, uh, some one that is approved and two is rejected. So with this, this is showing us how we kind of map these columns. For choice, it works great all day long. For choices, however, you would see the numbers only and not the actual value. So you'd have to find a way to map those comma delimited list of numbers into their respective names. You can do that with some transformations later where you basically have a comma delimited list of names also. All right, that's one of the biggest differences there. Once we're all done, we can hit close and apply. Again, there's lots more steps we can do with that cleansing. We didn't really clean up our data much at all, but given, we'll go ahead and let it keep on going. After we've done that, it will go ahead and load in those two tables. You're gonna see the relationships once it finishes up in a few seconds. It is not storing the actual data in my Power BI report because I'm doing direct query. So it's always reading data directly out of the subsystem. So when I go to this relationship here, we'll see the these two tables relate to each other. We can rename these however we want. You can see it say one to many relationship. Okay. And if I go over to my achievement log, I'll pick my achievement name, pick my number of points, and oh, all right. Do I have my name? Check name. Let's see. Do I have the number of points? Oh, I had the wrong, the wrong column, that's why. I think that's number of points. All right, let's try this one more time. 
Power BI is acting a little bit funky right now. I can't quite see that column name, so let me go ahead and minimize that. Increase this, the width of this just a little bit so we can see the actual column name. And that's our problem. I was grabbing the wrong column. I was grabbing the option number and not the actual number of points. Let me go ahead and check that number of points. Check the uh, achievement name. Here we go. Make this a little bit bigger. And what we'll do now is we'll show you how we can kind of make this more of a kiosk uh, and put it on TV perhaps. So if you do want to make this like a kiosk report that's automatically refreshing and showing you the latest and greatest data, we can do that by selecting the white area of my report, go to our little, uh, our little roll paint, board, paint roller right here, and then turn on page refresh. Now by default, let me get rid of my face here. All right, by default, it's going to do only the last 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and make this a little more frequent here for the purpose of this video. But again, don't do this in real life. Don't make it five seconds. You're gonna kill your database server by doing this. So, or your, your uh, dataverse in this case by doing this. There's too much uh, pounding of the data. So I'm gonna refresh every five seconds just so we can see the difference here. And I'm gonna bring that article's written number up a little higher. To do this, I'll go ahead and open up my application. There we go. I'll create a new request that I wrote an article and this was gonna be 30 points, blah, blah, blah and it's for a certain professor, Brian K, and I'll hit save. Next, I'll go out there and find my article written. There, I guess my model driven app, and I'll go ahead, I'm gonna artificially bump the number of points here. Let's do, how about 500 points? I'll hit save and close, and I'll hop over to Power BI. Oh, it already refreshed, darn. Let me go ahead and, uh, I have to have to catch it right at the right time. Let's go 5,000 points to really make this obscene. And then I will open up Power BI, and then a few seconds, there's my articles written right here, and there it goes. Articles written is now the top contender now. So again, this is a quick way of building a Power BI report to get some Dataverse database. The key difference there is you need that environment URL. You'll see how the options are flattened, the lookups are flattened. That's a key, the big, the key difference there, which makes things very, very simple for building out reports. All right, hope you enjoyed this video on how to rebuild a Power BI report against the Dataverse. This is one of many reports, or one of many classes that we offer at PragmaticWorks.com. We have about 20 Power BI classes, uh, about a half a dozen Power Apps classes, a whole bunch of stuff that we offer. Please visit us at PragmaticWorks.com. And if you found this video awesome and you want to find other videos like this, please do subscribe. We add videos uh, almost every few days. Have a great day and thanks for joining me today. Goodbye.